Welcome back to Mosaic. I'm Angela Pollock, and with me today is Monica Williams. And we are talking about two of the works of mercy that we don't often hear about a lot in our, in our work in the church, but are so important, burying the dead and mourning the dead. The works of mercy, there are many different ones, but um, we talk about the corporal works of mercy and the spiritual works of mercy. Corporal meaning work and activity, and that's what we're going to talk about in this segment, is that physical activity of burying the dead. Um, Monica, it seems that there are less and less Christian burials today, and I'm wondering if you could, could talk to us a little bit about, um, is that your experience, and why do you think that is? There is a trend to an increase in cremation, and I think some people are under the impression that if you are cremated, you don't have the opportunity to have a funeral. And that, of course, is, is not true. We have an entire ritual built into the Catholic funeral rite that is specifically geared towards cremation. It has a beautiful selection of prayers uh, that takes people who have chosen cremation through those moments in our church tradition of Christian funeral. So you can have an entire funeral with a vigil and a funeral mass and a committal at the cemetery and be cremated. So that's an important piece of that. There's also, I think, sometimes a sense that people have that they, do, they just don't want a lot of extra things. They, they don't want to be the focus of too much attention. You know, you hear your mom say, oh, don't buy me anything or don't do anything special for me. It's that kind of feeling sometimes. But really what happens with funerals is it speaks to a, an internal need that all of us have as human beings to mark that something important has happened. Mm -hmm. So when we take a look at our society today, and uh, as we're talking, we, we recently had the terrible tragedy in Orlando. We've had the death of some very beloved celebrities, uh, Muhammad Ali and Prince, and the outpouring of people wanting to gather wanting to remember, wanting to tell that story. That's a very basic human need. So even though sometimes with cremation, we realize that need in some different ways, people still want to gather, want to remember, want to say a prayer, want to tell a story. And we're very blessed with our Christian tradition that we have this ritual that is so rich in the words and the music and, and the pacing together that we can use. Mm -hmm. Definitely. I, I hear what you're saying that, you know, as we look at some of those examples of the celebrities and the tragedies in, in the recent news, you do see there's this natural instinctual desire to celebrate the person's li the people's lives, to remember them, to share those stories. And um, people have naturally across the country come together in various ways, you know, prayerfully and, and I just think you, you've hit on something really important, and I wonder what it is about cremation. You're, you know, I've definitely heard that and seen that in, min, in the ministry work that I do, that there is this growing trend towards that, and I wonder why people think that you don't need to have a funeral with that. Do you, do you know what that is or why that is? I think some of <laughs> that we have to, as funeral and cemetery professionals, take as our own responsibility. I don't think we've always done a good enough job at talking about the ways in which people can remember their loved ones within their own religious tradition or just personally. And so we bear some responsibility for that and we as church always need to do a better job of catechesis and talking to people about what, are, what is the richness of this tradition that we have to support you at a difficult time, at a life-changing time? Mm -hmm. Because there is that tremendous tradition we have to draw on. So for our viewers, what, um, what would you want to share with them about our, our ritual of burying the dead in the Roman Catholic faith and how that might be helpful to them or, or something that you might want to let them know about that might help them to understand how this service could actually be a beautiful way of really celebrating someone's life and, um, and burying the dead. I think one thing that it's important for people to know that sometimes people aren't aware of is that it's, it's true that you can make this very personalized. Mm. So a lot of times what we encounter today, everyone wants to personalize things. Yes. <laughs> right? you, you've got your own playlist right, and, right. and things like that. That is possible within our Catholic funeral tradition as well. Uh, when we sit down with people ahead of time when they're beginning to plan for a funeral, we can talk about 
What are the songs that are meaningful to you? What are the readings that really speak to to you, to this person you're planning for? Uh, what kinds of videos or photographs can we show at the reception, at the gathering, that really tell the story of this life? So we never want people to think that a funeral is boring mm -hmm. or terribly sad. It is sad, and that's okay. If we're sad, it means we really are going to miss someone, and we've really loved that person. And it's hard to avoid that sadness. So a funeral really gives us a way to, to work through that, to be supported by family members and friends and parishioners, neighbors, co-workers, and to have an opportunity to really focus on the wonderful piece of that life. You said to celebrate the life. Mm -hmm. And the Order of Christian Funerals is designed to be a celebration of life. We think of that as a more modern term, but really that's an ancient term in our, in our mm -hmm. church's teaching on how to uh, conduct funerals. It's a celebration of life, of the gift of that life. Wonderful. So when people, when you talk about people personalizing it um, within our tradition of the church, does that mean that they can bring in um, cultural things as well? As, you know, not just, I'm thinking about my mother who is not dead, but she wants a um, particular song, The Spirit in the Sky, <laughs> to be played at her funeral. And I'm thinking about so many people that I know, though, have that same kind of, they want particular things. You'll hear them reference different things in culture um, that are not necessarily a part of what we, you know, they're not part of the hymnal. <laughs> they're not a part of our prayer books, but they're really meaningful to people. And can they include those types of things as well? They can. I like to tell people there's a time and a place for everything, mm -hmm. right? Ecclesiastes tells us right, that. Right, right. So when is that appropriate? Probably not at the communion of hymn, course not or right, the meditation right, right but it is absolutely appropriate to be the music of the backdrop of that video tribute mm -hmm. it is absolutely appropriate to be played while people are gathering at the vigil so there's always a way to incorporate something that's important um, either uh, during the vigil during the reception or in some cases at the mass but our primary focus of course is the mass Wonderful. Thank you so much, Monica. It's wonderful to learn about how we can personalize this and make it meaningful and really celebrate the lives of those we love. Thank you for talking about burying the dead. When we come back, we're going to talk more about mourning the dead. And um, just after this brief break, thank you.